Hey guys, it's Cans, and today's video is going to be all about how every single artist, no matter how professional or how many years they've been doing it for, um, every single artist makes mistakes. So today I'm going to be following my usual pattern of inking and colouring with coloured ink, and we'll just see where this goes. Um, we are drawing today a lovely skull, spider web, and flower, and girl drawing. Um, I'll talk more about the meaning behind all of this though later. For now, I've just erased the outer sketch. You can see a close-up of it there. Um, I really enjoyed drawing the sketch, and now I finally get to ink it with my FW acrylic ink in black. Um, I always find the close-up inking to be seriously satisfying, but I haven't really got that set up sorted just yet for my own vlogging, I suppose. Um, so for now, you just get to see that beautiful, juicy black ink line. So this sketch came around because, if you might know me, um, I'm really into drawing very unusual subjects. Um, I like things that are a little bit different and a little bit challenging to draw. So of course we go for two human faces, one being completely covered in skin and bone and all that kind of nonsense, um, and the other one just a plain skull. Um, and I suppose if I got really arty farty with this drawing, I could explain that, you know, this is the marriage between life and death and you know facing the fact that the two coexist together and you cannot have life without death and vice versa and all that kind of stuff but if i'm being honest i really just enjoy drawing semi creepy things and making them look halfway beautiful so you'll see that a big like motif in this picture is just a lot of flowers and nature and stuff i suppose that really does also bring home that idea of life and death are both very natural forces um but yeah, and I've had lots of practice drawing skulls before in my own artistic history, shall I say. And I just really took my time drawing this one out because I wanted to make sure it got lots of tiny little details. Um, so it was really interesting. And I did learn more about the planes of the face than I knew before, which is great. Um, yeah, and then I got really spooky with it. And I decided last minute to add a big old spider to it. Um, I personally do not enjoy spiders very much. I respect them, but they freak me out just a little bit. Um, but I thought, you know, they have their own little image of being the bringers of death, but also a manifestation of the natural order of things. So I suppose it kind of fits. Um, it was a challenge for me to get a picture of a spider and sit here and draw it out detailed with all the legs and the eight eyes and that whole shebang. Um, but I'm really glad that I did. And then I drew some spider webs in the eye sockets and the gaps of the skull. I don't really know why. I just wanted to really incorporate that the spider wasn't just on top of the skull. It was part of the picture. In my own opinion, I think I did a half decent job drawing out the spider. Um, it took me a good few tries though because I wanted to get everything right because I know second that I put something wrong, somebody who really knows spiders well is going to come and tell me, oh, you know, um, they have this joint and this joint. And so it's not perfect at all. But I think for my first real go at trying to draw a halfway decent spider, this isn't that bad. Um, I definitely need more practice, though. I am proud to say, though, that my severe arachnophobia as a child has really developed. And now, instead of wanting to get someone to squish every spider I see, I just rather prefer to scoot them out the door. Um, I like them, but not in, not in my space, thanks. Now here you're seeing me inking in one of the daisy-like flowers. Um, I remember when I was sketching this, I originally wanted it to be just your typical yellow and white daisy, um, because I think they're cute and they're simple, and yellow is my number one colour, so I really tried to just incorporate that into this my little leaves and stems that I found somewhere on Pinterest I don't know if I can find the picture I will let you guys know um so yeah the flowers are a big part of this picture I really wanted to create my favorite very dark 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 background and to put these bright like almost luminous things on top of it just to make it stand out again that like idea of dark and light coinciding and belonging together 
And yeah, I really did just enjoy the shape of these flowers and leaves and how much fun they were and trying to fill out all the space because I really wanted this picture to be seriously busy. I personally love art where you can look at it for hours and hours and hours and you will still find new things about it. I haven't gotten to that level myself yet, but I really want to push myself to do more and more detailed and full pictures because I just think that they, they're beautiful and they're interesting, you know? So this flower here is, I think, a peony. Um, it's basically my typical fancy flower that I go to to draw whenever I'm looking for something, you know, a little bit more pizzazz. Um, so basically the way that I drew it would to be outline each of the petals and then throw some lines in there just to create that semi-realistic look. Not realistic, more like a tattoo-y kind of look, which I think was fun because skulls and flowers go really well together in tattoo art and that is something that I definitely am always interested in. Um, here you can see me doing some more petals and I really focused on doing just this half of the picture first because I wanted to make sure it was jam-packed before I worked on the other half, which is the girl or woman or lover or however you want to interpret it, life I suppose. Um, and when this side was really fully, fully packed with just things to look at and lots of different elements, I was able to move on to the second side. Now, um, sketching out this girl's face was not easy. I originally actually meant for this page in my sketchbook just to be me practicing profiles. And I ended up getting this idea of drawing this girl. Um, and I spent forever trying to get her, like the planes of her face right. And then when I had her drawn, I thought, you know, she needs to be looking at something. And that's when the skull came in and everything kind of just fell into place. So this was really, really fun. Um, also, I think I found my reference image on Pinterest. I will link it for you guys if I can find it. Um, I really challenged myself trying to draw lips from a three-quarter angle because I can never do that. Um, and adding in a fringe or bangs because I've actually never really done that in my own art before. So this picture was really about pushing my own limits to the nth degree. Now, here you'll see me drawing what I want to call the connecting lines. Um, basically, I kind of just instantly thought, when I was thinking, how am I going to make these two become one picture? I immediately thought of, like, brambles. I don't remember which... I think it's Briar Rose, the fairy tale, about the girl whose whole cover castle gets covered in brambles. I think it's Sleeping Beauty. I don't know. I immediately thought of brambles. Um, just because I think, you know, they kind of symbolize like being stuck in place or being tied to something um so i wanted to just literally tie these two images together but obviously i added some curls and some twirls because you know you got to make it cute i guess now you may not really see them in the inking or if i'm honest in the final piece but i did attempt to draw some more spider's webs in and amongst the brambles just to bring that spider home in the picture I don't know how successful it was, but I mean, it was an attempt, an attempt was made, um, and I think that it just filled up that middle space and made it just a bit more busy the way that I was intending it all to look. Um, now you can obviously see me doing my favourite trick of blacking in absolutely everything in the background, and if you look closely, you'll notice, this is a really dumb mistake, um, that first block that I just coloured in was actually part of the skull and I should have left it white, but I did not. and. I only realized this a couple of minutes later, and I just decided, you know what, I'm going to leave it in there. Um, art doesn't really have to be perfect. Little did I know the escapade I would get up to in the second half of this video. So yeah, I blacked it all in, really just to help my own brain as well, to define which shapes meant to be colored in and which were meant to just completely be ignored. So I love blacking in, again, with my acrylic ink in black, and yeah, it was fun. Okay, so now that this half of the picture, or I think the whole picture actually, there's not much black on the other side. 
So now that the picture's been blacked out in the background, I took a very light wash of the ink and started trying to create some sort of shadows on the skull, but it was kind of difficult, if I'm honest, because there were so many things overlapping with the skull and interrupting its normal shapes, so I really tried my best. Um, but it was just a little bit tricky, and then I had to figure out how to make this spider look black without completely meshing it into the background, um, or leaving it too pale and unnoticeable, so I off the bat, already started having struggles with using ink to colour this picture in. Um, here you can see that I'm just blacking out the sockets and the nose and what I think is a sinus. I don't know, it was on my skull reference picture. So I'm just trying to add in some details, but even as I'm looking at it now, I just, it was not really working for me the way that I was expecting it to. It, I was too scared to go too dark, but I ended up being too light. And it was just not a fun time. I even tried to make extra layers, especially on the spider, and it was just a mess. But here we have another cool close-up of practically nothing. Um, here's where I got up my coloured inks, and I started trying to do a kind of abstract colour pattern, colour palette for this girl's face. Um, and at first I was pretty halfway confident. I watered down some yellow and I started to colour in the planes of the face and I thought, you know, this could work, this could go down really well. Um, it was difficult to get these yellows looking half decent and then when I added in the pink, I just knew this was not the direction I wanted to go in and this is not what I wanted this to look like and I had no idea at all of how to fix it. Um, I thought maybe I'll just let it dry and I'll go back in again later, so I started trying to put some pink into the flowers, but I don't know if my washes were just too light or if I just was expecting something unrealistic, but the flower also wasn't really working for me and this is where I really started to panic because I'd obviously put in so much effort. So here we bring out the pencils. Um, in my own art practice, when in doubt, just go back in with colour pencils. Um, they're my favourite art supply. I go back to them all the time. I learned most of what I know on pencils. Um, and the second that I started adding in natural colours, I want to say, or having a wider colour palette, it just changed the game. And now that I was able to kind of get over the fear of going too light or too dark with the ink, I just fell straight into my comfort zone of bold colours in coloured pencil, being completely just random with it, and I thought, you know, at this point, this piece is either going to be fabulous or it's going to be terrible, so, I mean, I might as well just do what I want with this. So I just chucked in pinks, and I think I even ended up putting a bit of purples in there. I used a nice brown to get a really reddish colour. The skin turned out a really, I want to say, unique tone. It just wasn't red, but it wasn't beige, but it also had a lot of yellow in it, I don't know. Um, I just had a lot of fun with it and I thought, you know, let's just see where this goes. So I'm putting in a lot of red around the eyes, chin, cheeks, nose, just to add that kind of almost lifelike colour, but I'm not really going for any kind of realism in this. Um, so here you can see me putting the purple because I just thought, well, might as well. Um, yeah, I'm really glad that I changed my idea and went with coloured pencils instead because I have no idea how it would have happened if I had done just the straight ink. Um, so here now I'm doing a technique they call burnishing, which is basically just taking a pencil um, and going over what you've already coloured in really, really dark. Um, what this does, as far as I know, is it flattens the, the tooth, the roughness of the paper, and creates a very kind of creamy finish with no white dots in the middle. So, yeah, I went in really hard with my beigey pencil, and then what you can do with burnishing, at least with the pencils that I have, the Colleen Collard pencils, um, you can go over a burnishing with like other little layers, it's called a glaze, um, so I was able to just finish off that skin and make it look kind of how I wanted it to. And here you can see me drawing in the colours of the flower the way that I wanted them to look. So I put in a little bit of baby pink, and I put bright yellow on the edges of each petal, um, and this is a colour palette that I personally really enjoy. I threw in some dark pink again near the base of the petals, and I think I even threw in again some of that purple. 
just to bring it all together. Um, and when I went through with the pink, the baby pink again, finally, and burnished out these leaves, I was so, 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 so grateful that I had, again, changed from ink to colored pencil. I think they turned out really cute, and I just completed that process again for all the other peony kind of flowers. Um, the spider, I knew I couldn't just do straight black. Um, so I used black as my really dark shadows, but most of the spider's actually in purple, which I think is really nice because it brings more of that purple color to the first half of the page. Um, and then I really just went crazy and I thought, you know what, let's just put some blue in here. So instead of having my white and yellow flowers the way that I originally intended, I just went in with a baby blue and an orange pencil and I thought, let's see what happens. And then I thought, let's see what happens if I put my neon pencils onto this as well. So I grabbed them, I've got about six in my set, they all have the black stripe on them. And I just went to town and I just put neon everywhere. And by this point, I was starting to feel like maybe I had saved the picture and maybe it could turn into something I really like. Um, even though it was a bit funky and it was a bit, I want to say, technicolor, I really just was so grateful that this was starting to look half decent. Because again, like I say, I'd spent a lot of time on this already. I didn't want to just scrap it and start a new thing. So I've just grabbed, I think, three different kinds of green. Um, my neon green a medium kind of leafy green and then a nice dark green because I'm going in now and coloring all of the stems in the same color palette. So I start off with just taking that medium green and taking it from the base of each leaf and bringing it out to the middle of each leaf and then shading in with the dark green one. Um, originally I wanted to use the neon green to add highlights to the ends of these leaves but it just wasn't doing it for me so I thought you know what yellow and I'm glad that I did because it makes the leaves really bright and look really, really like summery and sunshiny. And that is exactly the kind of vibrancy I wanted for this. So I repeated that with all of the other stems of leaves in this picture. And now I'm going in for the like wild peony leaves, which I chose to do in a kind of turquoise, maybe to kind of marry the blue of the daisy like flowers and the green of the stems. Um, so I had a medium turquoise and a very deep turquoise, and then I put bright blue on the ends. Um, this picture is in no way meant to be realistic. It is just something that I had an idea for, and it went completely in a different direction. But I kind of had fun with it, and it was fun to experiment. So here, I'm trying to put some white back into the spider, because I thought it was just a bit too dark, but my white colored pencil is not exactly as efficient as I thought it would be. So I kind of just... Yeah, it didn't work out well for me. So after the epic failure of the white pencil, I got my mom's acrylic markers and started putting in just straight paint highlights. This is where I actually went in and got a hold of my inks again, even though they had failed me miserably earlier on. I had a nice brown ink that I hadn't actually used before, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to give her brown hair. And I really enjoyed it because this wasn't just a normal brown, it was a very ready brown, it was very warm, so it added a whole new level of colours to this picture, in my opinion. Um, I didn't bother making it too perfectly shaded in, I didn't really mind it being choppy, I kind of wanted that look, I always find it very cool. And then I went in and coloured in the brambles with that very same purple that everything else has some of this purple in. Um, it was hard to identify, like, what were brambles and what were spider webs? It was just getting a bit too muddled in my brain. Um, but I used the purple as well to just go back in and add those very faint little shades of purple back onto the spider just to complete the lightening up of it. And this is the final piece, I guess. Um, I hope you had fun and thanks for joining me.